Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. Today, we will discuss another internal style concept. There have been many interesting topics covered in this series, and today's video is the 6th ninth episode. Many Xing Yi practitioners often neglect a very important area involved in power relief. That area is the coccyx or tailbone. The coccyx is very important in all three internal styles, but is rarely discussed. I will introduce the coccyx practice in Xing Yi in today's video and then discuss the same topic in Tai Chi and the Bagua practice over the next two weeks. But first, Let's warm up with the Dao De Jing commentary on Xiu Dao. <clears throat> in the chapters covered in the previous two videos, Lao Zi introduced his philosophical concept of the nature of the Dao, the Tian Dao or the Dao of Heaven by emphasizing Wu Wei or non-action. In the seventh chapter, he introduced the concept of Ren Dao or the Dao of humans. He said Tian Chang Di Jiu at the beginning of this chapter. Tian means heaven, Chang means eternal, Di means earth, and Jiu means everlasting. Put together, it means that heaven is eternal and earth is everlasting. In other words, both heaven and the earth endure for a long time. Then he continued to elaborate on the reason behind this conclusion. He said, quote, <coughs> 天地之所以能长久者, 非以其无歇无已,故能成其思。Quote. Translation: The cause of their endurance is their indifference to long life. This is why forever. Thus, the sage, indifferent to himself, is the greatest among others, and taking no care for himself, he is nevertheless preserved. By being the most unselfish, he is the most secure of all. End translation. So, in this chapter, Lao Tzu appreciated the universe, the earth, and the great Tao. Furthermore, he used the Tao of the universe to express the ideal state of humans, the Ren Dao, or the Tao of humans. According to Lao Tzu, the Tao of humans follows the Tao of heaven. Wu Wei or non-action is the Tao of heaven. Therefore, the Tao of humans should apply the same approach. Again, he hinted at the importance of non-action by using the expression of the relationship between the universe and the humans. In other words, he promoted the concept of one should ignore his own desire and find himself content. He is complete because he does not serve himself. Therefore, the first four words of this chapter, Tian Chang Di Jiu, or the heaven is eternal and the earth is everlasting. It's the conclusion is planned by the rest of the sentences. So, what does Tian Chang Di Jiu mean in Xiu Dao? Let me explain. If you have read ancient Taoist documents, you will definitely have come across two words, Tian Di. Since Taoists believe that the human body is a small universe, living in a large universe. Principles of nature can be used to guide the understanding and the practice of the human body. 
The term 天人合一 is used to express the unity of humans and nature. So, Taoist practice always tries to observe and analyze nature in order to follow the discovered principles. For example, Chen Pu, the author of Jiu Zhuan Jin Dan Mi Jue, or the practice secret of Nine Circulation Golden Elixir, said in his book, quote, Tian Di Shan He, Liu He Wan Wu, Zai Wo Shen Zhi Nei, Wo Shen Zai Tian Di Zhi Wai, Zhi Jue Zi Zhong Yi Dian Guang Ming, Ru Ri, Nai Dan Jiang Ye. End quote. Translation: Those including heaven, earth, mountains, rivers, and all others in the universe are inside of my body. Well, my body is outside of the universe. The feeling is that a spot as bright as the sun. This is the process of achieving the elixir. In the translation, so he used the term heaven and earth to express that our body is part of the universe by using the expression "everything is in the body," but the body is beyond everything. A commonly used expression in ancient Taoist documents. Also, a very common term to describe internal elixir practice. In the ancient times, was Duo Tian Di Zao Hua. Duo means grasp and master the power. Tian Di means heaven and earth. Zao means create. Hua means evolution. Very often, ancient Daoists used the term Duo Tian Di Zao Hua to express the importance and the complexity of internal elixir practice. As the way to grasp the power of creating and evolving the universe. For example, in the same book, Chen Pu said that internal elixir practice is called "Duo Tian Di Zao Hua Cai Ri Zhi Jing." Translation: Grasp the power of creating and evolving heaven and the earth. And gather the essence of the sun. End translation. So the term Tian Chang Di Jiu, often shortened to Tian Di, used in the first sentence of the seventh chapter of Tao Te Ching, set the overall practice principle for Taoist internal elixir refinement practice. With that. Let's move on to today's main topic: coxes in Xingyi practice. Topics covered in today's video include: first, coxes in ancient documents; second, coxes in martial art practice; third, coxes practice in Xingyi; fourth, principles of coxes practice in Xingyi; fifth, misperception; sixth, demonstration; and seven. Takeaways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Topic one: Coxes in ancient documents. Coxes is a very important topic in ancient Chinese practice documents. Originally, it was a term only used in Taoist internal energy circulation practices, including Xiu Dao or Qi Gong. Especially in Xiu Dao practice, coxes is considered one of the most critical energy gates in meditation. For example, there are three energy gates or san guan in Taoist meditation, and the coxes or wei lui is the first gate in the internal energy refinement process. In ancient documents, wei means The place where sea water flowed to, Lui means the gathering place. Put together, it means the place where sea water gathers and then flows away from. For example, 
in the famous Qiu Shui or the Floods of、uh, Autumn, written by Zhuang Zi, one of the most important Taoist figures in history, said, "Tian Xia Zhi Da Mo Da Yu Hai." 万川归之，不知何时止而不盈；苇蕊谢之，不知何时急而不虚。End quote. Translation: Of all the waters under heaven, there are none so great as the sea. A myriad of streams flow into it without ceasing, and yet it is not filled. And afterwards, it discharged them also without ceasing, and yet it is not emptied. In the translation, this may be the earliest record of the term "wei lui," which is a term used in this text to describe the movement of the water. So, since "wei lui" originally meant the Gathering and flowing of water. Later, Taoist practitioners used this term to describe the area as the base of the spinal column, commonly referred to as the tailbone. The reason ancient Taoist practitioners used this term to name this area was due to its function in terms of energy refinement. It is believed that. Energy gathered in the lower Dantian area will move upward along the Du Mai or Governor Meridian, which enters the brain along with the spine and then keeps following other energy refinement process. So, in most of the Taoist meditation schools, Wei Lui is the critical energy gate that. The lower Dantian energy has to push through first before moving upward to the back area and the jade pillow area, which are the other two critical energy gates. These three gates are collectively called San Guan O Three Gate, and the Wei Lui is the first gate O Di Yi Guan. When we read Taoist elixir practice documents, coxes of Wei Lui or the Wei Lui Guan or Gate of Wei Lui is the commonly used term. Together, the Yang energy and the light it pass through the, this gate is comparatively easy to practice in Xiu Dao. To summarize, Wei Lui or Wei Lui Gate. Is the first energy gate that a practitioner has to pay attention to in Tao's practice in the energy refinement process. Ancient Tao's practitioners used this term to describe the image of energy, which is like the gathered sea water that passes through this gate for further refinement. So. How is the coxis or wei lui used in martial art practice? That brings us to the next topic. Topic two: coxis in martial art practice. Coxis, as the term used in Taoist meditation, is the static concept since it is the term used to describe the first energy gate in the energy refinement process. For Xiu Dao practice, one should not deliberately work on the coccyx area, but just let energy naturally pass through this area. The real focus is on the lower Dantian, not the coccyx, since the first energy gate is just the place where the energy passes through, so that it's channeled along the right path. The path is the Du Mai or Governor Vessel per most Xiu Dao schools, in, introduced earlier in the previous section. At the same time, in contrast with the energy practice, the internal martial art community used the term Wei Lui or Coxis 
to describe a physical area that one has to practice deliberately in martial practice, especially in the martial power generation process, which is the dynamic concept. The term Wei Lui used in martial art documents was from the Ming Dynasty or less than 500 years ago. Based on my research, some documents containing this term claim to have existed earlier than 500 years ago but are actually not as old as claimed. For example, the famous Nei Gong Si Jing or the Internal Practice Four Classics, kept and published by Song Shirong, the second generation of Xing Yi, one of the eight disciples of the Xing Yi founder Li Luoneng, briefly introduced this term and its practice in martial art. By the way, this book was written hundreds of years before Song Shirong. Song promoted this book since it introduced some very important martial art principles that could be used for internal style practice. But this book was not written only for internal style practice since back then there was no such concept as internal style. In other words, this book was written neither by Xing Yi practitioners nor by any martial artist for that matter. It was only hundreds of years later that this book got adopted by internal style practitioners to guide their martial art practice, thus becoming a classic document for Xing Yi. It is very important since we have to know that any martial art style, no matter internal or external, can all adopt as well as adapt concepts introduced in this book as their guiding principles in practice. And the concepts in this book are applicable to not only Xing Yi but Tai Chi and Ba Gua as well. Overemphasized on the applicability of this book in Xing Yi is incorrect. A general principle can be applied by anyone and any style. By the way, in ancient martial art documents, this area has also been called Gui Wei or Turtle Tail. For example, in the Nei Gong Si Jing or Internal Practice for Classics, Gui Wei was used. Gui Wei is a very visual expression of Wei Lui or Coxis indeed. As mentioned earlier, not just Xing Yi but Tai Chi and Ba Gua practices also apply this term in describing each practice. I will introduce the application of this term in both Tai Chi and Ba Gua in the next two videos, so stay tuned. It is worth noting that Xue Dian in his Xiang Xing Shu practice emphasized the importance of the coccyx. Even more importantly, he used a specific term to specifically describe the practice of a coccyx, which will be introduced later in this video. Since coccyx is related to Dan Tian practice and Dan Tian practice is directly related to internal martial power generation, Coxis is considered a martial art secret by many martial art schools. This is why there have not been many documents introducing this topic so far. I hope you will pay attention to this aspect in your practice and it will definitely deepen your understanding of the internal martial art practice with time. So, how should you train the coccyx in Xing Yi? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 3 Coccyx Practice in Xing Yi. Due to the lack of references to the coccyx practice in martial art practice and its importance in martial power generation effect, the teaching of coccyx is still limited to a very small range of practitioners. 
However, in order to promote authentic traditional martial art practice, I'd like to openly share it with the community. Anyone working on improving their Dan Tian power should pay special attention to this area. In the Nei Gong Si Jing or Internal Practice for Classics book, it says, quote, Yong Li Xiang Shang Fan Qi, Zhe Zhen Qi Zi Ran Shang Sheng Yi. End quote. Translation Use force and push it upward, then the energy will naturally rise. End the translation. Here, it talks about three points. First, use force. Second, push upward. And the third, energy rises. The first point, use force, is not hard to understand since it is about fuzzy movement and the force should be applied. The second point, pushes upward, is a bit confusing since it does not mention whether it pushes toward the front or the bike. It only says upward in the text. And then the third point, under the rises, which is understandable. So we have to solve the confusion caused by the second point. Speaking from personal practice and teaching experience, the word Xiang Shang Fan Qi or push it upward means that the coccyx should naturally push inward and upward by keeping the lower back flat. By doing so, the coccyx area will naturally push energy upward without pushing the coccyx upward. So, the sentence in that book actually talks about the result of the coccyx and the flat lower back, and not just about pushing the coccyx upward. In other words, keeping the lower back flat actually makes the coccyx naturally upward. This is the secret of the second lower back position that will maximize the internal power generation involving the coccyx practice. By the way, when you see the modern Wushu Xing Yi, they keep the lower back artificially straight in order to quote unquote look better. But that actually violates the traditional standard. With other wrong practices such as wrong elbow position and mistranslation and misinterpretation of some key Xing Yi principles. It is no wonder that modern Wushu based Xing Yi practice is only for martial performance and severely lacking in any martial function. So, the lower back position is the key element for correct movement of the coccyx and it should be practiced correctly. Now, let me talk about the coccyx practice according to Xue Dian, the Xing Yi legend of the last century. In his Xiang Xing Shu book, he used the term Jiao Wei Lui to describe the practice. Jiao means steer, and Wei Lui means coccyx. Put together, it means that the practice of the coccyx area is to steer it. The word steer used here is great, since in the Chinese language, this word specifically indicates first, coccyx has to move, and two, coccyx has to make a small but circular movement. This is the meaning of this word used in Tianjin, my hometown, and also Xue Dian's place of residence. So, based on these two important descriptions of the coccyx practice, especially Xue Dian's term, the coccyx should be utilized in the Faji movement in order to maximize the power generated by the lower Dantian. This is why I have emphasized the lower back area, the area that controls the movement of the coccyx in prior videos when introducing Fa Jin related topics. Coccyx practice is an inseparable part of the internal martial energy practice, 
which should be practiced internally. A detail-oriented practice that aims to improve internal martial energy generation. It takes time, effort, and patience, but the benefits are worth it. To summarize, having a small circular movement with the coccyx is the key aspect in Xing Ni Fa Jin practice, which deserves your attention and practice. It is especially important in advanced power release practice such as Hua Jin or neutralizing power, which I have introduced before. Then, what are some important principles of coccyx practice in Xing Ni? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 4 Principles of Coccyx Practice in Xing Ni Coccyx practice, in terms of managing its subtle movements, is challenging to begin with. It becomes even more so due to a lack of authoritative references. I'd like to introduce two important principles for any practitioner to follow and eventually apply to their own practice. These two principles can be used not only as a guiding principles but also in coccyx practice directly. They are first, Dan Tian Gun Dong, and two, Yi Nei Dai Wai. Let me explain them one by one. First, Dan Tian Gun Dong. Dan Tian in martial arts is the whole lower stomach area. Gun means rolling a three-dimensional circular movement that aims to generate martial power with Dantian movements. Dong means move. Put together, it means that the lower Dantian area has the rolling movement in action. In Xing Ni, especially Hebei style Xing Ni, the rolling motion of the Dantian is not that obvious compared to other styles since the Hebei style focuses on the short but fast movement of the lower Dantian area in power generation. The Hebei style focuses on forward and backward movements more than upward and downward, which makes the Dantian rolling motion more subtle. To achieve it, Moving the coccyx area actually becomes more important. So, Dan Tian Gun Dong, or the rolling movement of the Dan Tian, is not only the result of a coccyx practice but can also improve the coccyx practice in martial power generation. In other words, coccyx practice and Dan Tian Gun Dong are mutually dependent on each other. So, Focusing on Dan Tian Gun Dong is a good way to achieve coccyx practice in Xing Yi. Second, Yi Nei Dai Wai. Yi means use or with. Nei means internal. Dai means lead or control. Wai means external or movement. Put together, Yi Nei Dai Wai means to use internal movements to lead the external movements. Here, the internal movements specifically mean the movement of the coccyx. Bear in mind, the term internal actually means different things according to its context. For example, coccyx is the physical area of our body and it should be analyzed according to its physical movements and our martial intent. So, the term Nei or internal here actually means the subtle movement of the coccyx while the term external means the external movements of the limbs and the body. But more importantly, it also means the manifestation of physical movements. In other words, External physical movements are the result of the manifestation of internal subtle movements and related martial intent. So, when working on coccyx practice, pay attention to its details and 
correlates its physical movements with martial intent. This is the key paradigm shift from external to internal. An advanced topic such as Cox's practice has many more principles that require our attention. In the interest of time, I will mention more relevant principles in future videos. Now, are there any misperceptions about Cox's practice? Well, even though Cox's is not a popular topic due to the lack of attention and reference, there are still some misperceptions resulting in the neglect of Cox's practice. That brings us to the next topic. Topic 5. Misperception In martial art practice, coordination is always an important topic. However, coordination does not mean unnecessarily putting two unrelated parts together to artificially create a relationship. For example, some people say that in the Santi stance of a Xing Yi practice, coxit should coordinate with the heel of the back foot, or at least the coxit should align with the back heel vertically. This is a misperception. Let me debunk it today. This is actually unnecessary coordination, which I have heard about only recently. You have to know that all coordination, both direct and indirect, aim for power development and power release. For example, different triangles in stance training, splitting force, fa jin training, and so on, all fit into this category. However, there is no coordination between back heel and coccyx in power development or power release, and there is no such rule to test the physical alignment between the center line which is expressed by the coccyx and the back heel. So, the claim to coordinate between coccyx and back heel is just unnecessary. This claim is, in fact, only a new and misguided creation. Coxis is a dynamic concept, meaning that its function should be illustrated by dynamic movement. Using one physical place to indicate coordination with another physical location in a stance is indeed a static concept which has nothing to do with the function of the body part, for example, the coccyx and the heel. Now, let me demonstrate a Xing Yi Fa Jin exercise which requires the correct practice of the coccyx in the next topic. Topic 6. Demonstration Today, I'd like to demonstrate a Xing Yi movement. It is from Xue Dian's Xiang Xing Shu. A single movement named Shi Zi Dou Mao or Lion Shaking Its Hairs. Okay, Xue Dian's Lion Movement. One, two, three. Now we put the force. One. Topic 7. Takeaways Many interesting topics have been covered in this video in order to explain an advanced practice of Xing Yi. First, coccyx in ancient documents. Following the original definition, Wei Lui in ancient documents or Wei Lui Gate is the first energy gate that a practitioner has to pay attention to in Taoist practice in the energy refinement process. Ancient Taoist practitioners used this term to describe the image of energy, which is like the geysered sea water that passes through this gate for 
further refinement. Second, Cognizant in martial art practice. Cognizant is considered a secret practice to many styles and many martial art schools since it is critically involved in the process of generating martial power, even though its movement is very subtle. 3. How to practice Cognizant in Xing Yi? Besides some explanations of the Cognizant practice of different Xing Yi schools, according to Xue Dian, having a small circular movement with the Cognizant is the key aspect in Xing Yi Fajin practice, which deserves your attention and practice. It is especially important in advanced power releasing practices such as Hua Jin or neutralizing power. Fourth, Principles of Cognizant Practice in Xing Yi First, Dan Tian Gun Dong The lower Dan Tian area has the rolling movement in action. Second, Yi Nei Dai Wai To use internal movements to lead the external movements. Fifth, Misperception Some people say that the Santi stance of Xing Yi practice Cognizant should coordinate with the heel of the back foot, or at least the cognizant should align with the back heel vertically. That is a misperception. That concludes today's video. Thanks for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.